tonight on KSL Outdoors. Get him? You get him this Ooh. time? We're chasing the biggest freshwater fish found in North America. Never had a fish pull like this. We're chasing the prehistoric white sturgeon with a couple of rookies. I'm Adam Eagle, and let's go fishing. KSL Outdoors with Adam Eakle is brought to you by your local Ford stores. Thanks for tuning in to KSL Outdoors. I'm Adam Eakle. Tonight, we got kind of a bucket list show for you. We're up in Idaho with my buddy Dan Carrico. We're targeting the big white sturgeon here on the Snake River. We got a couple rookies, Randy and Ryan, who've never done it, always wanted to, so we're hoping to get them their first big old sturgeon. We're launching down here around King Hill. We're gonna run on up river maybe about 15 miles, hit a few holes along the way, and hopefully we'll hook up with some of these big old gators. Glad to have you guys down here. Come and enjoy the, our sport fishing here. Quite a treat to get a hook into these big prehistoric fish. And I really love you bringing these sturgeon virgins up here. It's just darn nice of you. You do that about every year, Adam. <laughs> what, a, what a friend. <laughs> okay, let's go for it, guys. The run up river is just part of the thrill of coming up to this part of southern Idaho. That's Castle Rock. That's where everybody gets in trouble. One of the healthiest populations of white sturgeon in Idaho are found right here on the Snake River between Bliss Dam and CJ Strike Reservoir. Dan has been running this stretch of river close to 30 years, chasing these giant bottom dwellers. I think I'll try at the upper end of the hole here first. What is it about these big white fish? You know, they're just a cool fish. You think about how old they are, you know, 20 years old before they reach five foot and can start uh, reproduction and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. That's just awesome. And then you get up into these ones that ever, you know, they get in the nine, 10 foot range. You could be talking an 80 year old fish. I mean, it's just uh, an awesome critter. These things are prehistoric. Okay, first thing you want to do is make sure that your uh, bar is uh, bent down on these things. And then look at your line, make sure it's uh, not frayed or anything from a previous trip. Then lastly, make sure your hook is good and sharp. You work too hard for these sturgeon bites to miss them because of a dull hook. You can use anything from squid to sucker meat for bait. Dan prefers these small rainbow trout called morts. And there's numerous ways you can hook these fish up. You can run it side to side. Uh, when they're biting light, I like to take and, and run it through the top of the head to where it's poking out the top like that. Then just do half hitches on it for a mort this size. I do about three. You really don't want that bait spinning in the water. That's why you kind of hog tie it. Okay, this one we won't put any scent on. We'll just throw it out as it is. Oh, wow. Then just wait till you feel it hit the bottom. And it's not very deep out there in this particular hole. Maybe 30 feet. There you go. This one's a sturgeon. Yep. Oh, come on. Come on. Yeah, start reeling in. Here, you take the fish. Stand up on the deck, Murph, to where you can fight it a little better. Holy crap. Stop, stop. That drag's still tight, right? Good and tight. Okay, now you start working. See, don't fast jerky movement, just reel down and. But when he's running like that, just let yeah, him run? Yeah, when he's running, just hang on. Okay, now start working. I think that's a good fish. Why? Because it's pulling oh. mostly over. What, did you break loose? Yep. Oh, that's too bad. That was a good fish. He's about pulled mostly out of the boat. 
Mosley was all right. <laughs> I thought you were going in, Mosley. Oh, that straightened the hook. That's what happened. This is a brand new hook. I'm sorry for bending your gear for now. <laughs> Coming up next. Oh, there he is. Oh. We'll do battle with a couple more fish. Tell you how you can tackle these monsters from shore, and we'll dive deeper into the gear to use for sturgeon. But first, let's check out this week's climate quiz question. White sturgeon are the largest and oldest freshwater fish in North America. In the wild, they can live to be over 100 years old. Sturgeon fully mature at about five years of age. Aquatic biologists estimate that sturgeon only reproduce successfully every three to five years. Our climate quiz question tonight is, what is the current catch and release record for white sturgeon in Idaho? Now, once you find the answer, log on to our KSL Outdoors Facebook page and give us the correct answer. We'll then randomly select and announce a winner on our page the following week. The winner set to walk away with a Climate Static V sleeping pad. Climate, comfortable, rugged, and lightweight. KSL Outdoors, powered by Ford. We'll be right back on the Mighty Snake River. KSL Outdoors is also brought to you by Smith & Edwards, Fish Tech Outfitters, Utah State Parks, Burt Brothers, Climate, King's Camo, and Camp Chef. You got him? Hit him again. Set it again. All right. <laughs> That one's serious. Yeah. Get up there, Mort. Get on. Welcome back to the Snake River. Ryan has hit a good fish and decided to hand the rod off to our buddy, Mort. You better not lose that. Is the drag all right on that? Yeah, he's pulling. What do you think, Mort? A little tussle, huh? We're going to be here a while. Just a four footer. Come on. No, that's one of the baby ones. Oh. No way! I wasn't doing nothing. Well, I guarantee he's not going to be giving me crap about losing one again. <laughs> Just down the shore from us, friends Adam and Mark have driven in to fish the same hole, and Mark has a good fish on. He's a big one, too. Yeah. You don't have to have a boat. When I first started, I fished from the shore all the time. Uh, the boat just gives you access to a few more holes that the normal population can't get. But anyone can come up here, you'll find little dirt roads branching off the main roads that lead right down to the river to the main holes. People have been fishing for these things for, you know, many, many decades. You want a piece of him, Fry? It's totally up to you. I don't really want a piece of him. Well, I'm getting tired. Well, I'll sure take him. I mean, I think I got him broke to leave, but I can't pull on him anymore. What you typically look for is a place that has some back eddies I along the swift water because uh, it's pretty hard to, uh, from the shore to in swift water to get your bait to hold in, in the current which you need to have a hold still. Look for a back eddy, flip out there, darn good chance you're going to get in. There's a lot of scourging up and down the river. You got him up here now. He might be able to get him now. If he don't cut us off on the rock here close. You want him back? Oh, not yet. My fingers are still freaking tingling. <laughs> These fish will tax even the most experienced angler. I've seen fights last upwards of 40 minutes. Mark and Adam are into this fight about 30. Get your head up there. Yes. Oh. <laughs> this fishery is sustainable only if everybody does their part. Remember, use only barbless hooks. Make sure you're using heavy enough gear and remember, it's illegal to remove these fish from the water. Just get quality equipment. These are big fish, incredibly strong. Uh, I typically use 80 pound braid. This is about a nine and a half foot rod. You don't have to buy $300 rods to get into this. This was like 49 bucks at one of the big box stores. And it's caught literally hundreds of sturgeon. And then just get you, I think a, a quality reel is the most important. Get a good pin reel or Shimano reel or something like that. And uh, you're good to go. Maybe it is an eight footer. We close. Sliding sinker rigs are required when fishing for sturgeon. This is how your sliding sinker rig should look. 
Remember to have a lighter test line on your sinker. That way, if you get snagged up, the sinker will break away, allowing you to reel in the rest of your rig. This regulation is intended to reduce the amount of fishing gear left in the river. Hey, coming up next. Never had a fish pull like this. Mort gets another shot, but first back to the guys at Fish Tech for tonight's fishing report. The winter has been so mild this year. It's time to get the boats out because a lot of lakes didn't even freeze and Deer Creek's been one of the better ones. Hi, I'm Mickey Anderson from Fish Tech with this week's fishing report. If you want to get your boat out and do a little bit of trolling, it's a great time to do it. And there's a variety of lures that are working well. Small pop gear, dodgers, flatfish, these are all working really well for trolling. If you'd rather maybe do a little trolling, a little casting, try a spinner out behind the boat or a Jake spinner lure. If you'd rather go out and just run the boat around a little bit and anchor, bait fishing's killer. Power bait with a little slip sinker and night crawlers below a bobber. You can use two rods. Why not use them both, put this on bottom, have this hanging down just four or five feet. If you'd rather throw flies, and this is what I like, you can do that with a spinning rod. Try a fly in a bubble with a variety of flies. Now, if you, your boat looks like this and you want to get out with your fly rod, these have been great and they're a lot of fun, especially up around the top end of the lake. Midge fishing's prime time now. Throw a midge with a slip bobber or get right up in the inlet. There's spring spawning rainbows right up in the inlet and they're going to be taking eggs. Try an egg pattern or if you're a bait fisher, go ahead and use the salmon eggs. Hey, for these tips and a whole lot more, come on down to Fish Tech and we'll help you out. Now for tonight's fishing line. I always have different scents from uh, a herring scent uh, to a clam scent. Uh, one of my favorites is called butt juice. And we won't get into the whys or anything like that, but uh, this tends to work really well on them. Have yourself some variety, go prepared. There, that'll drift down right about where we want to be. Oh, there he is. Did you get that one? Yeah, but there's ways out there. We've got sturgeon surfacing right in front of us. Dan's pretty optimistic that the fish are actively feeding. It's almost like a little tick, 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 tick. Copy tick, huh? It doesn't feel like much. Oh, let him load. Get him, get him this time. <laughs> you gave a good hook set that time, buddy. That's what I like to see. Get up on the deck where you can fight him better. You look pretty serious there. I don't want to lose this. No, don't lose it. Reel down. Reel down and when you're pulled up, now pull back. Nice and smooth. Yep, everything's smooth. Still taking line, huh? Yeah. Describe that, Mark. Best thing in the world. <laughs> Second best. Second best. <laughs> The most fun you can have in you Idaho. Help, so. <laughs> yeah, it's about the... <laughs> Pretty heavy? It's not as heavy as it, I think is that last one, but... Yeah. Never had a fish pull like this. Pure power. Yeah. Dano, we doing good? You are. Like I said, the important thing on these things is uh, when they stop running, while they're running, pull them line out, let them just do it, you rest. As soon as they stop, then you start working them, reel down, pull back in, never let them rest. You want to get these fish landed as quickly as you can. You don't want to get them all exhausted. You'll be exhausted, but you don't want them to be. How are you feeling right here? I'm good there, it's in my elbow. <laughs> my elbow's gonna lock up for long. I think this is probably only about a three footer. Yeah. Maybe two. two. Yeah. yeah. Well, in fact, maybe the bait just came alive. Yeah. Well. <laughs> you know? You about got him licked, buddy. I'd like to see him. <laughs> like he's stuck on the bottom. Oh, there he is. Oh. He's not bad. He's probably a four footer. Holy crap. <laughs> awesome. He's, uh, He's about five. I was going to say he's more than three or four. He's like eight or nine. <laughs> eight or nine. Sounds like a true fish. Four foot eight or nine. <laughs> now what do you want me to do, Dan? 
We'll jump in the water and take him off. This is awesome. Biggest fish you ever caught. Ten times big. It's huge. Keep <laughs> hanging on to his lip and turn him over the, so we can get the top side of him. They're just gorgeous fish. I mean, beautiful. some people say they're ugly, but I think they're just they're a awesome. they're beautiful picture. Now you got to get down there and give him a big old kiss. Yeah. Mm. Ah, he did it. Yeah. Big old virgin kiss. <laughs> oh, what do you think? Huh? Nice. Coolest thing I've ever done. If you can't get excited about something like this, you just will stay home and watch Oprah. Right? <laughs> More from the river in a moment, but first, a closer look at the sturgeon and our Utah field guide. Oh my goodness, that is a tank. That could be the biggest one I've ever caught. According to the Idaho Fish and Game, sturgeon up to 1,500 pounds were caught by anglers back in the early 1900s. Today they can be found in the Snake, Lower Salmon, and Kootenay rivers in Idaho. They are creatures of large rivers and are uniquely adapted for life on the bottom. Torpedo-shaped bodies help them swim effortlessly in brisk river currents, and their small eyes are adapted for the dark, deep pools where they live. Sensitive whiskers help them identify food items in the darker water, and their suction tube mouths easily vacuum up whatever food they come across. These fish grow to enormous sizes, feeding on the abundant runs of salmon, steelhead, Pacific lamprey, and freshwater mussels. From the early 1900s through the 1970s, the construction of dams on the Snake River isolated sturgeon populations and eliminated or greatly reduced important food sources such as salmon and steelhead. This, combined with poorly regulated harvest, had so severely reduced sturgeon numbers in much of the Snake River that in 1970, the Idaho Fish and Game adopted catch and release only regulations for sturgeon. For more rules and information on how to have the least impact on these giant fish, check out the Idaho Fish and Game website at idfg.idaho.gov. You know, we picked a good day here in February to come out, highs in the 40s. Lows probably teens when we started out this morning, but good fishing, good friends. It's a lot of fun up here. Hey, we'll have more here in a moment, but first back to the guys in Salt Lake for tonight's recreation forecast. Welcome back to KSL Outdoors, back here on the banks of the Snake River. Hey, don't forget, starting Thursday and running through Sunday is the International Sportsman's Expo. Whether you're looking for a fishing trip to Alaska or maybe a hunting trip, or maybe you're looking for a new OHV or boat for the family, the ISC is the place to be. We'll be there, and we hope to see you there. Boy, the scenery here on the Snake River is pretty beautiful, especially on a day like today. I don't know if it's the uh, deer or the elk that you occasionally see here on the river, or you know all the ducks and geese you blow up as you're driving up the river as you blow through Castle Rock. Pretty spectacular. And of course, the white sturgeon, just icing on the cake. Hey, let's check out that uh, snapshot of the week now as we turn it over to you. We kick it off back in Idaho with two monster rainbows for young Carson. Carson was fishing Chesterfield Reservoir and landed this 25 inch and 22 inch rainbows. The $15 one day license sure paid off for this eight year old angler. While bass fishing in beautiful Southern Utah's Sand Hollow Reservoir, Rich Daniels hooked into this monster largemouth bass while throwing a spinner bait in shallow water. The fish gave Rich an epic fight. In the end, she weighed in at over 10 pounds and was promptly released. A true bass of a lifetime. Dexter called up to the Strawberry Bay Marina and asked where to go fishing. The guys sent him to the exact same bay we'd fished a week earlier. Dexter thought if it's good enough for us, it was good enough for him. And after missing quite a few, Dexter landed this four pound beauty for his first fish of the day. Just look at those colors. Buzz's nine-year-old grandson Daxton had been asking Grandpa to take him fishing, so on Super Bowl Sunday, Buzz and Dax were up at Pine View when Buzz latched into this 48-inch toothy tiger muskie. Buzz says the fish took him for quite a ride. It broke his ice rod into about five pieces, but he and Dax now have a memory to last a lifetime. And finally, our winner tonight caught his biggest fish ever at the Berry. Andy Kay finally managed to pull out his first slot busting cutthroat after many fishing trips to Strawberry. Andy says he wanted to keep the fish and put it in the ice hole in some water to keep it fresh, but the fish eventually found the hole and got away. Andy says this fish was meant to live. Andy reminds us all to get outdoors. He says there's 
always an adventure waiting. Well, I'd add to that, Andy, by saying there's always a fish story to be told. A cool catch worthy of our cool prize, as you just won our snapshot of the week. Remember, submit your pictures or video, plus an explanation of your latest outdoor adventures, online at ksltv.com. The winner each week wins a Camp Chef portable barbecue grill, great for any outdoor cooking. Plus, the winner is also entered into our Ford Trucks quarterly Facebook giveaway for a Camp Chef pellet grill. Build your outdoor kitchen with Camp Chef, the way to cook outdoors. First time in all my years of doing this that I've seen one actually straighten the dang hook out. <laughs> and uh, it had to be on our buddy over here, Bummer. <laughs> it, it was so, a, He's so strong. Yeah, I guess that's what it is. And old Mort with the Mort got his, got his bucket list. Yeah. Just a five footer. We got, but we got one excited. that is no longer a virgin. Isn't that amazing? <laughs> <laughs> good job, buddy. Congratulations yeah, job, to Lord you. Grant. That's Thank awesome. You. Thank you. And some good fishing, like we saw. Those guys pulled in a seven footer today. Yep, absolutely. You can do it from shore. Yep. Get up here and enjoy some big old white sturgeon. I'm Adam Meikle, KSL Outdoors. We'll see you next weekend. Good night.